Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zen, it's Faith is the Key. And um, the Holy Spirit just was prompting me to get on, to share my testimony of how God called me to become an attorney and my process of me taking the LSAT. Um, and I guess the bar, so I'll just go as God leads. So before I get into that, I'm gonna pray. Heavenly Father, decrease me and increase you. Holy Spirit, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cover this channel with the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that the words of my mouth bring glory and honor to you, God, as this is your channel and not mine. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So, um, at the age of 10, God planted in my heart to become an attorney. I remember praying and talking with God as a kid and, you know, praying and just having a conversation like me and you would be having a conversation with friends. And I remember watching Law and Order, the old one. I love Law and Order. And I remember just always being so intrigued by the injustices that was happening, such as I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand that, you know, people would just throw the book at people. People wasn't given a second chance. And kind of like how I live my life now, and how I always, li I always lived in my desire to be a criminal defense attorney, and advocate for others who didn't have a voice. It showed it through the word of God. Like I always believe in how Christ give us a second chance and chance after chance. I believed in people who would deserve the chance and who deserve redemption and stuff like that are those who are fairly mistreated. And, and you know, those are characteristics of Christ. And it's just something like in Judges, how God said, I'm gonna be an advocate and defender of those who can't defend themselves. And that's kind of what resonated in my heart for me. And I remember telling God, I wanted to save lives, but I didn't want to be a doctor. I wanted to be a teacher. I mean, I wanted to teach, but I didn't want to be a teacher, meaning help others get information that they didn't have the access to. So I remember 10 going to um, career day with my mom, red velvet uh, jacket on. It was so funny, y'all. And I had my little uh, briefcase, but I knew that at that moment that was the role God designed for me. That was the assignment on my life. Um, outside of this ministry, you know, he called me, to, of course, to be an advocate in the law world and ministering the gospel to people while I'm in the courtroom and wherever I meet them at, no matter what, that's what we're called to do, to share the good news and save as many as we can um, before we go on the other side. And God kept that dream in my heart a long time. And I remember um, my process getting there. I didn't have any mentors or nobody. I didn't meet my first actual attorney mentor until... 2011 of um at Northwestern State University and she was the person that helped me guided me through regarding learning about having to take the LSAT um the law school process and the bar exam and I always knew what law school I wanted to go to which was the Southern University Law Center ooh, ooh, Jaguars in the building um I always knew I wanted to go there um after leaving the PWI I knew I wanted to go back to being a great advocate and I heard so many great things about Southern and what type of lawyers they produce but before then they told me basically of course you know um we needed the LSAT score and a certain score you needed to get in also talking about the GPA average the GPA yeah the grade point average that we needed to get in and other type of backgrounds and requirements and for me I'm kind of like the underdog coming from a low income check to check family background everything else the first um in my family well the second in my family to go to college because my older sister went before me so she kind of paved the way in helping me get through college um but i'm actually the first attorney in our family and i remember um like just talking to god how i'm not a great tester and for me i had to take the lsat three times just like i had to take the mpre that's another portion of the bar exam um for attorneys to be um ethical in order for us to practice and i took that test four times but god allowed me to pass the bar exam on the first time and everybody was like how the heck did you have to take the mpre like four times but you passed the bar the first time i was like that's their fate. But, um, and that was God's plan, of course. And the prayers, I'm going to get into that. 
um, when I was at NSU, I remember first taking the LSAT. And who I've never been a great test taker. That's something I've always struggled with. But I also realized that I was limiting myself because I never put in the time to apply myself. And even when I did, I still felt like I'm not getting it. And with God, grace and help, I remember doing it just on the first time just to take it to get testing anxiety out the way. I made like a 130 the second time I took it. That's when God started speaking to me about I knew that I knew that I was meant to be here because instead of going to law school right after college, I took a year and a half off and worked at a job. Um, man, worked actually at a hospital. <laughs> then God moved me from a hospital to going back to Walmart, then transitioned me back to as a DCFS worker, um, working in a, a SNAP program, which is beautiful because now it also applies to the job I'm doing right now in Utah um, with the courts. And I'm just like, Mm, God works everything out, you know, according to his will, and it works all together like in Romans 8 and, Romans 8 and 28. So, um, as I remember finishing up um, college, studying, I, I was intensely, right before I began studying for the LSAT, and right before I graduated in December of 2012 from college, I'll never forget it, God gave me a dream, and the dream was of me, I remember, like, it's kind of like an out-of-body experience within the dream. I saw the LSAT score and I saw the score 145. And then I had just taken the LSAT for the second time. But something in my spirit just was like, what is this? And then the dream switched from my LSAT score to me being in Southern University, lost in the elevator. I didn't know it at the time. But then I, I realized that once, probably my second year, I actually got a, a recollection of that memory because that moment actually happened in my 2L year, um, but it was just different words. But in that moment, God had used my chancellor, um, vice chancellor, my professor, my contracts professor, and said, you want to be attorney? Don't you want to be attorney? Why are you trying to quit? Why are you trying to give up? Like, it was just an encouragement dream Let me know that like, I'm going to do this. And I remember having, like, a black, um, they had, like, the black rolling cart, you know, when you put the TVs on, in there, along with me and the two people, which was the chancellor and the vice chancellor. And, man, it's like, I remember waking up from that dream, but I knew that, that 145 score was not the score that I, I just knew in my spirit. It wasn't the score that I needed for the second time right before I needed to go to law school. That would have put me, would have been, would have put me into the place of going to law school in 2013 instead. Of course, God wanted me to do it in 2014 and it worked out well because his purpose, his plan is always right and his timing is always right. I think I wouldn't have done well um with my peers um if it would have been in another um class i'm grateful for my 2014 um well it's 2017 classmates basically we entered into 20 we entered law school into 2014 um and i'm probably saying um a lot but i'm just thinking y'all uh one of the things uh that after that moment I want to say probably two weeks I got my score, I made a 139. Just like I knew in my spirit, it resonated, that wasn't it. But I knew that the 145 was coming. So holding on to what God had showed me from, 2013, from 2013, from the whole year of 2013, I want to say from January all the way up until I took my exam in October, I was working at the hospital for a little while, um, for like maybe four or five months, and I would work 12-hour um, shifts overnight, day, in the emergency room, and I would be studying the LSAT book at the day, I mean, every day, like chance I could get during my shift, off my shift, studying, studying, studying. And then after that, after completing that job, um, Fast forward, I'm now um, working at Walmart, still studying. Then fast forward, God blessed me to walk into the job of the DC, DCFS worker. And that's going to be another testimony. I'm going to tell you how I'm hearing God's voice, how he told me not to take the job that paid more than the DCFS worker. But this job would allow me to do what he's calling me to do regarding kids and families in my ministry now. So I never forget it. I was praying and praying. I was seeking God crazy in 2013. Like I had got baptized, um, water baptized in July of 2013. Like I was 
head in, diving on God. Like, I'm, I'm all yours. I was getting up at 4, 3 in the morning, worshiping, and the enemy was coming with dreams and attacks, thoughts in my mind telling me you failed, you're not good enough, you're not, you're dumb, you know you come from the bottom, you're not going to be able to do that. But I kept the clan and the crane in my spirit, like, God, you're going to do this. I believe your word. I believe the, the dream that you told me. I'm holding on to it. And how do I know that dream was meant for me? I tested it against the word because in my spirit and in your knowing on your Noah, you know that you know that you know deep down like this is it this is what God called you to do nothing else but this and it's a desire that just never went away and as I continue to pursue God continue to push in the enemy kept on telling me crazy things the the day the week no the day of I got the results um I clicked on it didn't even get the results because I had to pay for my results because I didn't no longer qualify for a waiver that I uh, had used the last two terms. So then um, I paid the fee. Next thing you know, as I was praying, I remember telling my friend Arkea, like, girl, I'm waiting. And I mean, my spirit was just roared up and it was that same nervousness. And I kid y'all, I kid you not, y'all, I kid you not. Like, God bless you, girl. Right when I looked open the screen, the score was 145. So, man, I mean, I must have screamed and hollered all throughout that DCFS. So, after screaming and hollering, God just blessed me and said, this is what I showed you. See, that's why I told you all you need is one word. Even when the enemy is coming up against you, you need to stay in your Bible. You need to stay seeking God's face seeking his heart and seeking his hand in a way of where he can orchestrate your life not you and that blessed me so much you guys and after that i remember praying and asking god like god i made a 145 they say the score you need is a 150 with this gpa to get a scholarship i said god i declare and decree your word that you will create the scholarship for me you will give the scholarship to me you will be able to provide the opportunity god you will help me to show others what faith look like what believing and standing on the word with speaking into existence according to your word that anything you ask in my son jesus name shall be given to you you have not because you ask not and i remember telling god i'm asking i'm seeking i mean i'm asking i'm seeking and i'm knocking like those are scriptures i kept saying like I'm, I'm, i kept on repeating them back to back to back and lo and behold y'all as i was praying about my acceptance my scholarship everything else your girl got accepted with that 145 and your girl got a scholarship with that 145. Like, come on now. God. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly in all that we can ask for if you ask for it. And um, I'm going to be able to share the bar exam testimony in another video because that's, 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 that's another one that's too long. So I just want to be able to bless you how I pray. I I worship, I fasted, I wasn't watching TV at that time. I wasn't doing nothing but seeking God and listening for him. I wasn't seeking him so he can give me this because I want to glorify myself. But this is a desire that God placed in me just like he placed desires in you. That this is what we are called to do. And God already knows and has your life planned out. He is the author and the finisher of everything. That's Jesus Christ. He knows everything about us. The Holy Spirit wants to partner with us and say, this is what you need to do. This is what I called you to do. Stop walking outside of my will. That's why things might go right, but things definitely won't stay the same. And you'll keep being empty because you're not walking according to what you were designed to do in God's, um, in God's plan for your life. So I just pray that this word bless you, y'all, that y'all just have faith, that y'all don't stop believing, that you keep speaking the word of God over your life. You keep seeking his word, that you, you know, get with other believers to help you when you fall short and when you, the enemy comes against your mind, you use the scriptures to fight against him. You, you know, like he says in James, if you resist the enemy, he will flee. You know, you got to just keep getting in your word, keep getting in God's face, keep praying, keep crying, whatever it is, and trust that God will do what he said he's going to do over your life. So I just wanted to share y'all with how God um, opened up the door and showed me about my calling as an attorney, my LSAT score, my dream, and how me speaking over my life of a of 
asking for a scholarship and him putting me in the law school and being the first of my family to be able to do that. So I just give all glory and honor to God. And again, I pray this bless you guys and y'all have a good day.